worst marathon ever, man. Hello, folks. This is Rish Outfield. And this is Big Anklevich. Welcome to another episode of The Worst Marathon Ever. On That Gets My Goat. Don't say it. Oh, you didn't say it. By the Doonesty Fuddy oh, Fiction Magazine. Oh, butthole. Look what you've done. Yeah, we yeah, we had the chance to be real podcasters, yeah, and you blew it. I totally blew it. I'm sorry. Okay, so this is the last thing I'm going to say about Comic. I mean, it's not the last thing I'm going to say, but this is the last episode we're going to dedicate to Comic Con. And I just wanted to talk a tiny bit about the Marvel panel. Every year, there's something that's like the high point, the thing that I enjoyed the most, and uh, the thing I enjoyed the most in 2013's Comic Con was <laughs> at the beginning. Of the Marvel panel. The lights all went out. And Loki came out on stage. And it was Tom Hiddleston in his full Loki costume. And he basically just berates us and taunts us. And he says, where's your Avengers now? And the moderator says, oh no, hey, Loki, you can't address us that way. And he says, silence, you mewling quim. <laughs> it was so delightful. and I mean, he's such a great character, and Hiddleston brings so much evil glee to that character that it was, it was fun. And in the end, you know, he's like, there's one way you can survive, and that is to join me, to, to, to bow before me. And he's like, who will be, who will follow Loki? And then we all like cheered and stood and he's like, you know, you're all part of my army now. And, and then he left and that was it. They never said anything more about it. He didn't show up on the Thor panel or any of that stuff. It just was it. It was just there as like a really fun thing to do. And, <laughs> and I loved that. Oh, it was so cool. And. You know, when we finally get like a Thor movie or an Avengers movie without Loki, I think we'll feel his absence because he's just great. Um, anyhow, he, he is. He's a very good character, very uh, well done and very interesting. I don't know. It's surprising because Loki doesn't seem like that kind of a character that can be so powerful that he can take on all the Avengers kind of a thing. He's not like an Ultron or a Doctor Doom or somebody like that or Hulk where you're going to need all the Avengers to stop him. Yet he did. And it was totally believable and totally uh, well done and awesome the whole way through. Well, the same way with Lex Luthor. He is Superman's arch enemy, not because he's insanely powerful, but because he's smart and crafty and clever. And and I think Luthor is fun, and Lo but Loki, I mean, is even more fun. Loki kind of combines Lex Luthor and the Joker. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyhow, uh, the, the, the three things that they talked about at the Marvel Studios panel was Thor 2, the Dark World, which is the next Thor movie, uh, Captain America, the Winter Soldier, which comes out next year, and you can't even say next summer, it's next spring, and then the Guardians of the Galaxy, and we got to see footage of all of those things, and the Thor thing, I, the, the less I say about it, the better, because it comes out in just a couple months. But they showed so much footage from Thor The Dark World that I feel they showed too much footage. If anybody saw what I saw, we shouldn't have seen some of that stuff. And, and I can't explain it anymore other than to say, let's say that you went to a Return of the Jedi panel and they showed footage from Return of the Jedi and they show the Emperor shoot lightning from his fingers. Or they show Darth Vader laying down and Luke Skywalker unmasking him or whatever. You'd be like, whoa, oh my gosh. Anyway, I, th I thought it was at that level of spoilerishness with what happens in Thor. But again, I shouldn't say any more. The sad thing is, though, you will probably read it someplace unless you avoid all spoilers of what we saw. Anyhow. Luckily, I am uh, so unclued in... Oh, okay. un, un not clued in, but unhooked in, un whatever. Plugged in? Plugged in, maybe, to the way thing, you know, to those kind of things. I never, I never hear any of the spoilers. Oh, well, then that's um, good. So I'm usually, I don't have a problem. And you always talk about, you, you know, you, you try to avoid it and you still can't sometimes. I don't have a problem, and I think it's just because, yeah. They don't, they don't spoil those movies on soccer message boards as much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the you NFL still go to message, boards, message they, boards. Not a whole lot, but you know, I was just 
drawing a comparison. They don't spoil it a whole lot on the NFL broadcasts that I watch, so I'm able to avoid most spoilers. For the uh, Captain America sequel, they had pretty much all of the actors, I thought. They had Cap and Samuel Jackson, uh, Scarlett Johansson. I almost said Scarlet Witch. <laughs> uh, Black Widow, uh, Winter Soldier was there. Um, Agent 13, who was Sharon Carter. And uh, Maria Hill, I guess, is in it because she was on the panel. And the guy, I think, that plays Crossbones was on the panel, too. And they showed us some stuff from that. And it looks like it'll be a fun movie. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I, if somebody doesn't know who the Winter Soldier is, that's cool. I think that, that uh, that'll be a nice surprise. But uh, since he's played by the same actor... Seems like that's a spoiler that would be hard to avoid. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. It's possible. Like you, you were saying to me earlier that they're not trying to make you not know who he is. No. That they're just leaving it at that Cap doesn't know who he is, and and that's the the fun, which can be a great way to go about it. I've seen lots of movies where they do that kind of thing, where there's a surprise and everybody in the audience knows. Except for your character, and then you're just like, oh, no, no, you don't want to, ah. And you worry for them instead of get surprised when it is revealed. So. Yeah, I I, I think that that can work really well. It, it, it'll be interesting to see who knew and who kept it if, if from him. It, yeah, I don't know. It's, it feels like this movie is a little bit more political than the last one because it's, you know, him trying to become accustomed to the way the world works now. Uh-huh. And there are a lot more grays than just black and whites that there were in the 40s. And that, and, and that stuff I really eat up. I love the man at a time aspect, not just for Captain America, but for any story uh, with time travel where there's, you know, just future shock or past shock. shock. That kind of stuff is really neat. And, and, and anyway, that comes out in April. And then, but the thing that they seemed to focus on the longest was Guardians of the Galaxy. And, and we've talked about that. That one, I don't think, has a built-in audience. I don't think that one is a guaranteed blockbuster. That one's more of a gamble. And yeah. We were, I'd never even heard of it, to tell you the truth, until you told me of, that they were that was their next movie. And I'm just like, what? I've, I've never heard of this. And since then, I did see an episode of the Avengers cartoon in which the Guardians of the Galaxy... Uh, took part of but yeah before that and never ever once had i heard of these characters at all they had only i think been shooting for like 10 days they said on that movie and yet they still had footage to show us with characters interacting with cg characters (laughs) and I i don't know how they managed that but i loved that they did and uh the tonally that one seems like a blast like like Firefly and Ocean's Eleven combined, kind of like a heist movie with a bunch of disparate characters that all happen to be different species. And there's, I'm not going to say slapstick or whatever, but it seems to not take itself seriously at all. And that sort of thing can work. Well, you can, you might have to not take yourself seriously when Rocket Raccoon is one of your main characters. I mean, that's one of those things. It's like Howard the Duck trying to pull that off they sure didn't so uh you know i mean that's a similar kind of a challenge trying to pull off a raccoon with a giant gun and a bad attitude <laughs> i don't know well, you know i tonally i think it feels a lot like men in black okay you know what i mean that was a science fiction flick but it was also a comedy kind yeah. of I mean yeah, but comedy, it wasn't a comedy comedy you know what i mean it was th- there were humorous things going on and there were Okay, we are now recording, ready for the summing up. Let me tell you the story. No, there's too much. Let me sum up. So basically, the battery ran out on that last episode. But if I recall correctly, and I'm too lazy to go back and listen, I had said everything that I needed to say. Is is that how you remember it? Yeah, I think you were close. There might be some really important details that you left out that people are going to be screaming at the uh, their MP3 players say, what? Wait, what about this? 
you never finished this part. But, you know, we'll never know. Well, it's kind of like the Iron Man episode. Um, I know we talked for another half hour or 45 minutes, but I couldn't remember what we had said and what we hadn't said. And so I didn't make an effort to repeat the things that we had said before. I just said, okay, let's sum up. And that's what I was going to do now. I, I mean, at the very end of the night, they showed like the, the new logo for Avengers 2. And I think I described that. And uh, the new movie is called Avengers Age of Ultron. Did you describe the logo? I don't remember that you're describing the logo. Describe me the logo they, real quick oh, Okay, again. so they had just put together like a minute or 90 second presentation for us. And it showed uh-huh. each of the Avengers uh, items, most important items. For, for Tony Stark, it was his helmet. Uh-huh. For Thor, it was the hammer. For Cap, and it was the shield, shield you know, the bow, bow and the and pistol. The... And, and they had a quote from the earlier movies when they showed each one of those. And then in CG, all those objects melted together and became the head of Ultron. Uh-huh. And it said, Avengers Age of Ultron. And we all went kind of nuts because, you know, they had kept that a secret. And I thought that that was interesting. And, and I know so little about Ultron that unless they make it stupid... I'll be fine with it. <laughs> you know, and maybe in the next two years, I'll do some research and find out more about Ultron. Yeah, and then you'll be pissed when they change this and that and the other thing. Well, and that's what happened with, with Mandarin for me. I mean, I vaguely knew who Mandarin was as a kid and uh, as an adult. Uh, but then See, I leading w- up to Iron Man 3, knowing he was going to be in it... I, you know, I did what I could to catch up so I would know what was going uh, on, and that was a mistake. Yeah, see, I just, I, I didn't have that problem with it. I, I, until that movie started, I was pretty sure that it was just oranges. I didn't ah. realize that it was anything else. There's somebody mowing their lawn outside, and it is pitch dark. I, I, I don't how know. do you mow your lawn? Do you, can maybe, you wear, like, the night vision goggles? There you go. I was going to say, maybe it's like a vacuum. You know how you have a little headlight on the front of your vacuum, so, like, you go down into the corner and it, like, lights it up? Maybe he's got lights on his vac- on his lawnmower. I just, I'm, I'm amazed by that. That's weird. But, yeah, so that was the marble panel then. Yeah, uh, and Joss didn't even come out and say anything. It was just... uh, I think he was behind the curtain flipping everyone off, though. You didn't see that, but that was his contribution. Well, hopefully next year we will get an Avengers panel. Because I still feel like I was robbed of that Uh two years ago. um, Because they chose not to do an Avengers panel for some reason. Yeah, they didn't do anything, did they? Two years ago, they just... I I think it was the same year that Disney had its convention. They have like a D23 quarter uh what do you call it when like every four years convention kind of like the oh yeah like what's like the, the world or cup something. or something yeah and uh and it, it happened to fall in in uh, 2011 i think and so they said we'll save avengers for that and you know i didn't go to the disney thing but uh next year will be hopefully an avengers 2 panel and that, that'll be fun that deep Con or what is it called? D D twenty three, I believe, is what they call them. That D twenty three has got to be a pretty good convention these days because there's all the there's Pixar, there's Disney first of all, which is a lot of stuff. Then there's Pixar, which they now own. Then there's Marvel, which they also own. And then there's Star Wars, which they also own. It's pretty much everything you go to Comic Con for is now included in D twenty three. Sorry, I almost said decon again. Isn't that like a name of a... a, a, uh, a an ant killer. Yeah. <laughs> the, so uh, they probably it. also have like, uh, this is what we're bringing to our theme parks. All yeah. Right there too, you know. This is the new ride we're going to have at Orlando. Or yeah, right. they I, I get a know. simulation of it. You get in there and, the, and, it, <laughs> and it moves you around like on Star Tours, but... Yeah, I don't know what the hell they would do that. But yeah, I mean, that's what I was saying. They got Disney all... I mean, Disney's... Really enough to probably have its own convention all on its own, not including Pixar, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, they could have a Pixar convention yeah, by itself. At this point, really they neat. could. And uh, and they always they do have Star Wars conventions, and uh, they have. But yeah, now they can just put all that, and uh, that's interesting. I wonder if uh, that convention may rise in stature. If so, it would be nice. Comic Con is just too. Big, too well attended, too. There's too much stuff going on. But at this point, how how do you pare it down? How do you pull it back? 
when we become used to every network bringing their new shows and every studio having their own panels for the movies they've got coming down the pike. I... Yeah, I don't know. I uh, The only way I can think of is having weeks. Like maybe they break it up into several weeks or something like that and they have a movie week and they have a TV week and they have a book slash comic book week or something like that. That way they can pair it back or or they just keep doing you know what they really ought to do you know they have comic cons all around the country at different times they ought to just you know try and break it up so that you know this happens at this comic con this happens at that one kind of a thing so it's not all at the same one and all the rest of the comic cons are kind of useless nobody really cares a whole lot about the rest of them you just get William Shatner and Lou Ferrigno at those <laughs> and then that's it and those guys are at every comic, a, a, any convention anywhere around the country. They're basically at one every weekend, make all the money that they live off of every every week off of those. Which, I, you know, that'd be a fun life if you ask me. It'd be cool to be able to just do that. Just do a convention, a weekend, and you just travel around the country and you meet adoring fans over and over again and charge them $40 for your autograph or whatever. Well, for somebody like Shatner, that's going to be... Profitable, and I think he charges seventy. Oh, jeez! But how many people pay Lou Ferrigno for his autograph each week? And yeah, that in I don't Bethesda, know. Bethesda, Maryland, or, or 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 Little Rock, or someplace like that. I I wonder. I mean, what if you go to a convention, you put forth all the effort to go to Butte, and only two people ask for your autograph the whole weekend? Right. Well, I assume that they probably get some kind of an appearance fee. Oh, okay. Well, if that's I don't the case, know what that would be, and if that's going to be worth it on its own. But. Do the conventions pay these guys way and put them up for the night? And if so, then that I think yeah, a lot of those big name ones they do. I don't know if Lou Ferrigno counts as a big name, but for a lot of those stupid little conventions, it probably he probably does. I feel like we've talked too much. We were just going to yeah, sum up. we're supposed to be summing up and moving on. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that. There's actually a little bit more that we have to speak on. I just remembered. And uh, so we'll do that. We'll say goodbye. And uh, we'll see you again tomorrow with another episode. Thanks for listening to the Dune Steve. Worst marathon ever. Should I do the full thing? And it was. It really <laughs> was. All right. See you later, folks. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons, non-commercial 3.0 license.